Welcome back, ZeroK fans, to Nanolades of Dawn, I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are going to have one last match or replay today. It's going to be Sparkles and Ultra Godzilla on Onyx Cauldron. Sparkles going for the Spider Factory, and Ultra Godzilla going for the Shieldbot Factory. Shieldbot Factory and Onyx Cauldron being an absolute nightmare for the camera, because of course it is. Yeah, terrain detail like this is... Yeah, sorry if it bounces in weird ways. You shouldn't do that too often, but if it does, I apologize. Anyhow, nothing's too out of the ordinary coming in here. Some fleas coming up for sparkles, just for you know, normal scouting. On the other hand, Ultra Godzilla, not really scouting. More focused on defense, just guarding this. Actually, not even guarding, just having the bandit out that happens to be near that convict. But expanding as quickly as possible. Well, similar for sparkles. The sparkles is. Oops. What does sparkles do? Ah, I see. Yeah, of course, playing spiders, you're going to be building up a bunch of wind generators along the side here, which makes perfect sense. The Sparkles has their economy sorted out. Same time, Ultra Godzilla is going to be... Well, they're going to be expanding in a bit more of a mundane fashion, getting a lot of metal early on. Not worry too much about energy, and nor should they be. They have extra energy right now. They can easily get a few more power plants should they need to, and that's exactly what they're doing. Also, wind generators work fine on the ground, too. I mean, up in this high area, it kind of makes sense because they're like 1.8. But in the lower regions, it still works fine. Unfortunately, fleas are also going to work just fine, so that is where things will become a little bit of a problem, and I kind of wish that we had seen a bandit guard a convict. It's one of those things that you gotta do, like, it just, you really have to do, and it's just part of the meta these days. You send in a raider or two, have him guard one of your workers, have him guard your main expanding workers, and at least you can hold off assaults like that. Thankfully for the convict, the fleas weren't able to deal all that much damage. They got rid of the metal extractors, but didn't get rid of the convict, so no real permanent damage was done. All things considered, it was actually pretty good. Same time, though, Sparkle still is growing a pretty strong wind economy. I'm not quite sure what to expect there, other than Sparkles is going to have a really strong wind economy, and thus... Well, they're going to be able to get a lot of... Oh, okay, they're going to get a lot of power, but not a lot of overdrive. That's, that's the key thing. Is that there's nothing that's connecting the power plants to the metal extractors. So, it, ah, so, it, come on. So it is a little bit of a restriction that way. At the same time, it's still Sparkles' is Okay, Sparkles' is metal advantage, not energy advantage. Yeah, I actually kinda like this. The way Ultra Godzilla is playing this out is working alright. Sure, Ultra Godzilla's wind generators could drop. Actually, they could drop that. And Ultra Godzilla should probably get some solar plants. But for now, it's working fine. It is giving them overdrive, and that is helping. That is keeping them ahead of Sparkles. At the same time, though, Sparkles has been expanding faster. They didn't get raided out in their expansions at all. The Bandit is going to be able to come in and get rid of this naked expansion pretty much now. Assuming the Lotus doesn't build up in time, which it will, actually. The one Metal Extractor will go down. The second Metal Extractor will be saved unless the Bandit gets micro cleverly to avoid that. And seriously, camera, stop screwing with me. But... Other, no, that's not going to be able to do it. It is going to be hit. And, sorry, what this is, people in the stream chat pointing out that they've already seen this match. Yeah, I didn't actually take it because it was in the forum. I just took it because I was looking through all the replays and this seemed like a... No, sorry, this is a request. Like I said, this was a request by Ultra Godzilla. If anyone's wondering about this match, Ultra Godzilla said, Hey, this is a cool match I played with, with me and Sparkles. You might want to cast it. And I was like, okay, cool. So, no, it was a direct request, which is why... It, why is this doing... Oh, whatever. It's a direct request. That's why it's doing what it is. But that's why it's what I'm doing. At any rate, Bandit coming in here, still able to deal some damage, get rid of a Metal Extractor here or there, get, possibly get rid of this Recluse, but I... Would you stop that? But it's hard to call. The Recluse... The Recluse does go... Nope, Recluse survives. That is going to be a very nice defense by Sparkles, and ultimately Ultra Godzilla maintaining a very strong economy. So that's the thing, is that it's Ultra Godzilla. Ultra Godzilla coming in here. They are expanding finally, but they, like I said, this is the exact problem I was worried about. Their wind generators have dropped in power. Finally getting some solar collectors up, and there, oops, and there we see the solar collectors are being built up. That's good, but it is a little bit late. Sparkles already has a massive power advantage. Again, they have all these wind generators that are doing everything that they need to do. I mean, how many wind generators are this? If it's... Yeah, 46 energy worth of wind generators that have a minimum of 2.2. So that's permanent 46 energy. Sparkles is good. All they need is a pylon to pull this energy to the rest of their base. 
and they'll be solid. That's all they need. And I don't expect that... I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. I mean, it would have happened by now if it would have happened. Sparkles, for some reason, is not going for it. But they are still getting a lot of expansion, so it may not matter. Honestly, Sparkles can still use that energy for producing units. Same time, though, Ultra Godzilla using their own metal and energy mainly to make ravens. Interesting choice. A little bit risky, because Tarantulas could be built up right away, and that would basically nullify this entire force. But at the same time, no ravens or anything. And Sparkles doesn't have a huge amount of unit production compared to Ultra Godzilla. So Ultra Godzilla could get rid of, get away with this. Just build up a bunch of ravens, use that to deal with a few choice targets, maybe get rid of the factory, possibly the commander, a couple of caretakers. Actually, where's the commander anyway? I, that is a really good question. Where'd the commander go? Well, either way, the this can still be dealt with. Like, a lot of stuff can still be dealt with. Mm, no, I have no idea where the commander went. It didn't die yet, did it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Hard to find sometimes. But yeah, the the commander's still alive. Could be taken out. Some choice, like I said, choice targets could be taken out. And Sparkles does see it coming. And indeed, the choice target will be the factory. Six bombers will be enough. Actually, five is enough. But you know, just in case I have a backup. Get rid of one of the caretakers too, because why not? Good choice there. So get through get through to that spider factory, no problem. The air factory will probably fall soon afterwards, though. Admittedly, Sparkles should be able to rebuild in time, and there's also the fact that Sparkles still has their units in play. As much as those units aren't gonna be able to do too much. Yeah, they still exist. And with the other caretaker down, there's no well. Okay, I shouldn't say there's nothing. There actually Sparkles still has 25 metal per second going into the factory. So this isn't that simple. The owl is there, it does see what's going on, so it's not like it's completely free. But the point is, all the ground forces are going to be Ultra Godzilla. Sparkles can't really take them. At the same time, though, Sparkles is going to be a... A... Well... I don't know. Sparkles... Sparkles is kind of fine on the ground for now, though. Like They, they had some units on the ground. They could rebuild the Spider Factory without... I mean, they have the Spider Builders they could use to rebuild the Spider Factory, but it looks like they aren't really focusing on that. Focusing much more on just taking back air control, which makes a lot of sense. Because, like I said, they have the skirmishers, they can deal with some of the ground stuff. As long as the ravens don't get rid of all of these recklesses, they should be fine. And indeed, some of the recklesses, some of the ravens are doing their job, no problem. Sorry, the swifts are doing the job, no problem. The ravens are getting in as well, though. And that, how many recluses are left? This is the last recluse. That is going to be a swift and rather tragic death of that recluse. Leaving Sparkles in an awkward position right now, where they have all this power... Well, it's energy infrastructure, and not a whole lot of stuff to use it with. I mean, again, they're being built up as they go along. But also, again, they need to get another factory. And there's a shield factory coming up. So we will be seeing a bit of a shield mirror after this point. Spiders have done their job to an extent, but they may not be enough. The commander trying to jump away. It is not able to do so. The... Oh, actually, it is able to do so just barely. Getting rid of one of the ravens, protecting it just enough. But that's still a commander that will very quickly go down. The... Hacksaw not able to kill it, though. That commander has survived way too many miracle shots. I mean, the, the Hacksaw is doing a fine job, at least, to keep it alive. But, of course, the problem is, what are you going to do with these bandits? This commander does not have anything other than his base beam laser. So there's not a whole lot of options that it has available to actually do the job. And at the same time, Ultra Godzilla coming with some swifts, but they just don't have the air control yet. So Ultra Godzilla, at least, they're losing air control, but in the process, gaining ground control as Sparkles... Goes to build up a proxy tank factory in a relatively well-defended spot, but unfortunately, nothing defending on the ground. And the air control, while it has been taken... Okay, are you going to use this Phoenix to get rid of the rogues? Because that's really the only option available. There's not a whole lot else that Sparkles has to actually deal with that Ultra Godzilla is building right now. And Ultra Godzilla, they know it. I mean, they're expanding around the map. They're building up... Actually, they were expanding around the map. They've kind of slowed down a bit, actually. <laughs> they are attacking pretty strongly, though. I think Ultra Godzilla realizes that if they can get rid of the commander, and if they get rid of this front line, it's probably going to be game. And the thing is, this isn't particularly well defended, so it's doable. It's not going to be a huge sacrifice to get rid of the commander, and they're, of course, assuming that they don't use the ravens. The ravens still comes in, their hacksaws are counter, are raven counters. They get rid of ravens, that is their entire point. There is no way it's going to work out here. The swifts are, however, coming in here for Ultra Godzilla to try to do the trick, and they are at least sort of helping out. I mean... Now, one more swift left, so that is it. But another raven coming in here, and the hacksaw is still back up and running. 
So wisely the Raven going for the Metal Strider, but unwisely going over the right. The Hacksaw is on the way back. So the thing with Ultra Godzilla right now is they're attacking very regularly and very strongly, but at actually quite a bit of cost. I mean, think about all these Raven corpses that are just dotted around this area here. I mean, there's, okay, 107 metal worth. Pretty sure Sparkles has been reclaiming them the entire time. But also, Sparkles has now just gotten their overdrive going. Like, all this power that was built up on the cliff here, it's it's now all the way down. Like, it, there's... Yeah, that is done. That, that's been dealt with. So at this point, Sparkles can just overdrive their economy, or overdrive their economy right into a massive advantage as soon as they start getting more power plants built up. But yeah, even one pylon, honestly, one or two pylons would do the trick to get all this overdrive going and make you know, 143 energy on the metal. That would give them an extra 7, 8 metal per second. No problem. Putting them at a fairly large advantage against Ultra Godzilla, which right now they're at a dead heat. I mean, overall they are at a dead. Oops. Overall they are at a dead heat because that is, that's kind of the thing here. Ultra Godzilla has just really just this tiny metal advantage occasionally, but usually a bit of a disadvantage, and a much stronger ground army. But the tank factory has been built. The ogre is up. It's mainly just going to tank out this felon. Sorry, the felon. The rogue. Felons are going to have no problem with it, but the rogue. Sorry, other round. I was right the first time. Tank out the felon. The rogues are going to be able to deal with it. The felon's not. And that is a nice opening. Especially since air control is basically in Sparkles' hands. They have the ravens coming up. They should be able to get rid of the felons no problem. Once, you know, some extra damage is done. At first, no. Felons do get rid of ravens at first, as you see just now. I mean, if the Cyclops comes in and tanks out the, ra the felon, the ravens can come in afterwards. But it looks like that's not going to happen. In fact... I don't think Sparkles quite realizes that, yeah, Felons kind of beat air. Or at least kind of beat Ravens. It's very difficult to deal with Felons using a Raven. I think, I think Wyverns have no problem, but Ravens fall apart. Although, on the other hand, now the Felons out of shields. There you go. Get rid of the Felons. Protect the base. Still, Ultra Godzilla... They're starting to harass on all sides. The Sparkles, they do have a lot of overdrive that could come in. They aren't using the overdrive. They are not building up the power plants to actually connect all this overdrive. And I feel like it's because, remember, I'm constantly looking at this with the power view. Not everyone is. But I feel like it's one of those things you gotta, gotta bear in mind is where your overdrive circles are gonna be. Because, like I said, this one metal extractor, it's doing a lot of work. The other metal extractors are not. And even this one metal extractor, it's what? Two times? Three times. So it's not huge. And I really would kind of, I really kind of wish Sparkles would just go in and just pull that overdrive into the other stuff, and that'd be great. It'd be super useful. Because overdrive scales better when you're going between multiple metal extractors than when you do a single one. Like one metal extractor, okay, that's getting what, a three fold increase? If we were to go across the entire metal extractor set here, it'd probably be closer to a five, six ish fold increase overall. I'm guessing, I can't remember the exact numbers. But, I'm sort of going off of memory. But yeah, it'd be something like that. But unfortunately, Sparkles is not paying attention to that and not really building that up, which, if they were, they'd be in a much stronger position. Although, to be fair, at this point, it's not a terrible position that they're in. I mean, they're still doing a good job tanking out the units that are being sent. They're still dealing with this stuff as a defense. Their commander is still alive, I think. Maybe I had to guess. Yeah, they are. Right, right there. Oops. Ultra Godzilla also with the commander alive, but that might end sometime soon with the Ravens being used here. I mean, they're getting rid of the felons. That is their prime target. But sooner or later, that's going to be a dead felon. Sooner rather than later, thanks to that one stinger. But yeah, if the Ravens come in here, they could get rid of the Ultra Godzilla's commander, open up this northeast side, try to take that out a bit. I don't think they care, though. I mean, obviously they care more about this. It's... Sparkles' commander, that's the real target. If Sparkles' commander dies, this frontline expansion basically has nothing to support and rebuild it. Whereas, Sparkles, they don't really care about the commander. They, I'm sorry, Ultra Godzilla doesn't really care. It's an economy thing, yes. If the if Ultra Godzilla's commander dies, then the economy will be a bit weaker and Sparkles will get an even bigger advantage, but Sparkles generally has the advantage. And I'll have a much bigger advantage if they actually use the overdrive, which kind of wish they wouldn't, but, or kind of wish they would, but they haven't. Again, I think they're focused entirely on here. I mean, Sparkles, they are a strong player still. But it's one of those things that takes a lot of practice to get used to 
the level of multitasking you need to use in this game. And Sparkles, they're very focused on this frontline expansion. We're following their cursor right now. Like, finally coming back here occasionally, but not even really looking at it long enough to see, hey, wait a sec. We aren't building up overdrive. Like, there's overdrive on the table that could be used. And that's a really important thing to know. But yeah, Sparkles has focused so much on this one frontline ba battle, one frontline base, that there really isn't a whole lot else they can that they're focusing on because their focus in is in one spot and one spot only. And that's the key thing. You got to make sure that when you're focused on stuff, it's tough to learn. And I, I myself struggle with it, which is it's kind of embarrassing. But yeah, it's one of those things that you kind of got to bear in mind is that sometimes you got to trust that the front line is going to live for at least five seconds while you double check. Hey, wait a sec. Do I have overdrive? Do I have all my metal extractors built up? Do I have any defenses that could be built up that would open things up? Do I have units that I could... or Unit composition changes that I could make. That kind of thing. And at this point, Ultra Godzilla is putting so much pressure onto Sparkles that I don't think Sparkles really has the time to think about that. Or at least, really has the mental energy to think about that. And indeed, they don't. Sparkles, there's the GG. And that is going to be probably it. I think there's really not a whole lot else to say. Sparkles... I think they actually are throwing in the towel a bit too soon. I can kind of understand the idea. Like, they're really feeling the pressure from these units, but at the same time, like, one worker in their base, are, are, there, any, are there any cranes in their base? Any workers at all? Oh, there aren't. Okay, but I don't know, I can still build a crane and then use that to build up some more stuff and push back these units. I mean, Sparkles has the economic advantage and actually has the attrition advantage too. So that's the thing is that it's, it is a bit of an issue where Sparkles right now, they have the money. They could come in here. They could deal with everything. I'm just going to speed this up because apparently it's just a conversation. Like, they could deal with a bunch of this stuff, but they aren't. Which is a real shame because, like I said, the economy was in their favor. It's kind of no longer in their favor. But I think if they had set up the overdrive, they would have had an extra 10 or 5 to 10 metal per second, depending on how much they'd spread the overdrive around. Like, for all the expansions they have that are relatively safe that haven't been assault assaulted, that would have been an easy 5 10 metal. Easy 510 metal. And they already had an advantage, so it would have been a two full advantage in Ultra Godzilla. They could have turned that into basically anything. So it's a bit of a shame that Sparkles kind of gave up as soon as they did. And it's really a shame that Sparkles didn't really pay attention to their economy construction. And honestly, I think, like, calling it the new meta, I can see it's not unfair to say that shields are strong because they are pretty strong. But still, there, there were mistakes made. There were things that. Were, there were oversights that would have done a lot. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what changed about shield bots. Shield bots are weird. I mean, the thing is, shield bots, the only thing I can think of with them is, I mean, felons are very strong right now and hard to counter. War zone paused. So, I mean, you have that. But otherwise, I'm not really sure. I mean, shield balls as a concept, are pretty strong. But other, I mean, there's units that kind of counter them. I mean, any kind of status effect does basically counter that. Like, EMP is a really good one for that, too. But there's not a whole lot of units that do splash EMP. So, fair. <sighs> I mean, the only other thing I could possibly think of would be if you had something where it was, like, the total shields you have to punch through. I don't know. Because the thing with shields is that they're... A weakness of shields is that if you can deal more damage than the shield has strength left, you penetrate the shield. It doesn't actually block anything. But that, when you're dealing with a shield ball, like you have one shield that might be blocked, but then the next shield, well, I think the way it works is that you subtract out the power of every shield that a projectile passes through. So say if a projectile has 1,500 damage, it'll go through one thug shield, but then I don't think go through the next thug shield. Could be wrong. If stream chat... If I'm wrong, please correct me. But I'm fairly certain that's how it works. Yeah, and also, stream chat pointing out a few other mistakes made by Sparkles, mostly our feelings. Sparkles didn't rebuild caretakers in their base when they got destroyed, which, yeah, that, that did happen. The bomber, That was really good bombing runs by Ultra Godzilla, which weren't responded to, or weren't rebuilt from. And then, as a result, excessing happened. Didn't raid, or Sparkles didn't really raid much, didn't pressure much. I mean, to be fair, Ultra Godzilla did have a lot going for them as far as keeping a lot of their bases in a good spot. 
But yeah, that is fair. Like, Ultra Godzilla didn't have much defending this top expansion, just a singer. And not a whole lot was ex was defending the north. Actually, nothing was defending the north. So very little that wasn't something could that could have been pressure. Not a lot of scouting was devoted to that. And what's the other one? Oh yeah, and Sparkles could have expanded a lot faster. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so never mind. Shields actually are weaker than I thought. Apparently, according to F Fugenter, which I think is FFC, the shield, when you hit damage on the shield, so I, that makes more sense. That the damage isn't subtracted by shield power, so if you had a 1500 damage shot, it would hit every single thug and hit all of them through the shields. But it would stop at the felon, because the felon is 1600, but it would damage the felon shield down to 100, and then the next shot of the same damage would penetrate that shield, or what's left of it. Okay, that, that makes more sense. So, yeah, that... Anyway, that is that. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that the later games... I did adjust the depth of field settings. I'm not probably going to have to put that on GitHub. I Maybe I should just make that configurable. I'm really debating with the configuration on that, but... Hopefully they didn't look like stream artifacts that time. Although, admittedly, it's a map that is less prone to show that, but then again, there was also the entire thing up here. So, yeah, bit of a side thing. And people watching on YouTube, you're getting a higher resolution version than the people on stream. If you watch in 720p on YouTube, you'll have a better idea of how it looked on stream because I can't stream 1080p on Twitch without also streaming at like 10 megabits per second which a lot of people can't download so yeah that's why Twitch is 720 because that I can do it like 3000 kilobits per second or 3 megabits per second and people can download that without issue because Twitch I'm not don't have viewers on Twitch to get the automatic transcoding so yeah can't really go for high resolution on Twitch yet, which sucks. But YouTube, you guys get the full 1080p. So, yeah, you, it'll probably look better on YouTube. So you're wondering, what the heck are we complaining about? The thing with looking extreme artifacts. It's like, watch in 720p and you'll see. But anyway, that is that. So, thank you for watching. And have a good night. And first person stream when? Monday, maybe. That's usually when I try to do them, but I've... I don't know. I was really busy and retired, whatever, this week, so I didn't really have a chance. But yeah, wait, I have automatic transcoding? Okay, I guess I'm being told by stream the Twitch chat on stream that I do, in fact, have automatic transcoding. That's good to know. I think that is only happening because of the number of viewers. I think if I have only, like, five or six viewers, it's not there. Because right now there's, like, you know, it's double digits, so it's a bit better. I think at that point, then I'm higher in the queue. And maybe it's also... Oh, 10 viewers average. Oh, 10... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, Rafael. I didn't realize that 10 viewers average was the thing was the threshold. I also didn't realize that 10 viewers average, which... I know it doesn't sound like much, but hey, it's not a particularly huge game. Anyway, the point is, thank you for watching. Thank you, Rafael, for letting me know that I could probably go to higher resolution on the Twitch stream. In which case... Sure. I might as well. And otherwise, have a good night.